Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know about Markovnikov's rule, which dictates that in a reaction like electrophilic addition, when a carbocation intermediate is formed, it is specifically the more substituted carbocation of the two that are possible which will form. But why is this? Let's look at carbocation stability to understand how this works. First, a few details about carbocations. These are carbons with a formal positive charge because they have lost an electron domain. Because of this, they are sp2 hybridized and trigonal planar, so they are totally flat about the carbocation with 120 degree bond angles. This means that there is one remaining unhybridized p orbital, and this will be vacant, extending on lobes perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. Now let's revisit the mechanism for an addition reaction to contextualize carbocation stability. Recall that in the first step of a hydrohalogenation, a new CH bond was produced, leaving us with a carbocation. But it was the case that the new hydrogen ended up exclusively on the less substituted carbon, leaving us with this specific carbocation, which we can call a tertiary carbocation, since the carbon that bears the formal positive charge is bonded to three other carbons, in this case, three methyl groups. We did not see the reverse situation, where the hydrogen ended up on the more substituted carbon, which would leave us with this carbocation, which we would call a primary carbocation, since the carbon would be bonded to only one other carbon, the rest of the molecule. Only the first pathway occurs, and never the second. The reasoning behind this is that carbocations become more stable as they are more substituted, meaning when they have more adjacent alkyl groups. This has to do with a phenomenon called hyperconjugation, where electrons in adjacent CH bonds, which are roughly parallel to the lobes of the vacant unhybridized p orbital, lend some electron density to the carbocation, thereby stabilizing it. The more alkyl groups there are adjacent, the greater the effect. So the methyl cation would be the least stable carbocation possible, followed by a primary carbocation with one alkyl group, then a secondary carbocation with two alkyl groups, and the most stable would be a tertiary carbocation with three alkyl groups. This same phenomenon is also behind the stabilization of alkenes with greater substitution. Another reason for this stabilization has to do with inductive effects. This refers to electronic effects that are occurring through sigma bonds. The electron density surrounding alkyl groups is more polarizable through the sigma bond system than that around a hydrogen atom, so more alkyl results in a greater inductive effect, which is stabilizing. With that, we understand how hyperconjugation and inductive effects both contribute to the carbocation stability trend, which says that more highly substituted carbocations, meaning those with more alkyl groups, will be more stable. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.